my video podcast about my passions for yarn and knitting. My name is Ina and I am coming to you as always from Norway. I live here in the middle part of the country in a village with my family. Um, so welcome. Welcome if you are a new viewer and thank you for checking me out. And a warm welcome to any returning viewers. Um, if you have watched before, you might notice that uh, the setup is quite different this time. And the reason for that is this week is fall break here in Norway, uh, at least in the part of the country where I live. So that means that my daughters are home from school and um, uh, the place where I usually record this podcast in my youngest daughter's bedroom. And she's in that bedroom at the moment uh, asleep because uh, today I'm recording quite early in the morning or not very early. It's uh, past nine but um, she's on holiday and she likes to sleep in. And I am actually going to work later on today. And I thought if there were to be a podcast this week, I had to record here in my kitchen. So I'm sitting by my kitchen window, looking out on a beautiful fall day. The weather is quite cold. We have uh, freezing temperatures. Uh, in the night, uh, in the day, we have like, um, yeah, it's below 10 degrees Celsius, um, maybe around five, I believe the past two days, but um, the sun is up and it's um, still quite warm uh, when you are in the sun. Um, and it's very chilly in the shadows. Fall is definitely a beautiful time to spend in the mountains and we surely love to spend time in our cabin and we do so every opportunity we get so yeah we have been there for the past weekends um, but actually, the last weekend we spent at my parents' cabin. Um, I am from a different part of the country. I'm from the Oslo area, uh, which is uh, further south. And, um, and my parents have a cabin in the mountains, and um, that is in and it's pretty much halfway between Oslo and um, the area where I live. So we meet up there um, yeah, from time to time to spend, uh, spend the weekend together. And my brother, he's also living in the Oslo area with his family and they met up, uh, met us there as well. So. We were um, 11 in total in the cabin this past weekend and it was a lovely time and uh, we all love to go hiking and uh, play in the woods and um, make bonfires and make food on the bonfires and yeah we had just such a wonderful time together. But anyway, I guess you're here for the knitting and uh, today I have a couple of uh, finished objects. I do have uh, some whips to show you, um, some new stash. I also have um, decided to show you some children's knitwear because 
I have been requested to show what I knit for my kids. So I thought I would pop in a separate segment and show off some of uh, the garments that uh, are in rotation with my youngest, the four-year-old, today. Um, I also have an to, announcement to make, um, and that is the giveaway winner for the yarn and the progress keepers that I am giving away today. And lastly, I have some future knit knitting plans. And if you are interested in skipping some of the parts and uh, want to zoom or zoom, yeah, press forward to any of these segments, I have put some type stamps in the notes below. And yeah, and before I jump into my knitting, I I seem to always forget to mention how you can find me online, but I have a Ravelry and an Instagram account, and that is my username is Ina Pina, and on Instagram it's Ina Pina and a couple of underscores. And um, I have to admit that I haven't been too active there lately. I have quite a backlog to uh, finish up on Ravelry on my projects, but um, I am reading my Instagram account almost every every day. But I'm not. Sometimes I'm posting quite frequently and then I have some periods where I almost have no posts, so it's quite inconsistent, but that's how it is. Okay, let's jump into the knitting stuff. I have two finished objects today. And uh, the first one is my crazy sober ball socks. I think I was almost halfway on the first sock last time I podcasted. And um, these are definitely my autumnal socks because the colors are really reminding me of fall. And the yarn I have used is Crazy Sober Ball, which I love. And I'm sorry if I'm really trying to uh, get the close-up picture and I hope that the camera is focusing, but I haven't got a self view on this camera, so I haven't got a clue if you are if you are seeing this clearly or not. But I hope so. Um, so these were uh, my first attempt in a long, long, long time to make toe-up socks. I almost always knit cuff down, and that is definitely my preferred sock method, if you will. And um, I casted on, I believe, 24 stitches using the Judy Magic Cast On method. Uh, I found a tutorial on YouTube. And I really liked it. I think they turned out great. Um, I increased until I had 56 stitches. Yeah. I, I, I increased until I had 60 stitches uh, initially, but uh, when I tried them on my foot, they were too sloppy, so I had to... I had to reduce to 56. And they are 
are fit. Uh, the fit is perfect for me. I knitted a whole sock. I put in a scrap yarn for the heel and I did an afterthought heel. And uh, the heel is made out of a scrap that I had from a hedgehog fiber sock yarn uh, in the pollen colorway. Um, the cuff is just two by two rib and I uh, bound off um, just by my, my regular binding off. Um, uh, I'm not sure how to describe it, but I, I knit one and then I knit another one and then I pull the first one over the second one. And um, I guess that's just a very plain standard way of binding off, but I know that if I do so um, with the needles I knit the sock in, that would create a too tight of a bind off. So I went up one needle size when binding off. And the bind off is very loose and I'm actually a bit concerned if it's going to be too loose, but I think that I will just uh, start wearing them and see how it holds up. Uh, worst case, I just have to rip back uh, the bind off and redo that. So yeah, I am really really pleased with this pair. I love the colorway and I think that the yellow heel is such a fun contrast. And um, let me show you the rest of the ball. I believe I have enough for a second pair, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do a second pair. Um, I'm thinking maybe I could stripe it with a um, nice contrast and uh, make a stripey pair of socks. We will see. And the yarn is the crazy silver ball and um, the colorway is root 66. I'm not sure if you can see that but okay so that's the first finished object. My second finished object is a second pair of socks and these are knit for my son my four-year-old son and he has quite large feet for his age and he's quite tall for his age as well so so these are um, European size 31 I'm not sure what that translates to in other parts of the world but in comparison, my feet are European size 38, 39. Yeah, and these are European size 31 ish. And they actually just fit him. Uh, yeah, they fit him quite well right now. But if his feet are growing over the winter, I suspect that these will be too short or too small. But anyway, um, the yarn is a leftover from a ball that I had with the Arnan Carlos, Regia Arnan Carlos, and I think that this is the first design line that they had with Regia. And the Color is Fall Night or number 03655. And I really enjoy this. I decided to 
have contrast cuff and toes and that was very clever indeed because I totally ran out of yarn. I just had like one gram of yarn left when I finished finished the second sock. So perfect yarn management I would say. Uh, the contrast is a uh, strømpe garn and that, this is a yarn that I bought on holiday in Denmark uh, last year I believe and it is just like a standard sock yarn 70% wool and the rest is polyamide and the color is a number 926437 it's a nice teal color. Only concern with this yarn though is that I'm not sure if you can see this, but I'm trying up. If you can see the toe there, it is very pilly and almost felted. And this is after my son, he used these socks um, the past weekend um, I think he used them two days or maybe just one and after that I have hand washed them and this is how it's looking already they are looking quite worn already actually but I don't know it's not big, not a big deal because he is going to use <laughs> his socks quite hard and um, they will not look pretty after some time anyway. Uh, but yeah, I was actually thinking that I think that these two colors look so pretty together and uh, as I said I might stripe this together with uh, another yarn and the, the, my first thought was that this would be a perfect striping pair or striping match but after seeing how the yarn is holding up after such a short amount of time I'm not sure if I want to make socks for myself with this yarn. But we shall see. I mean, it's not important that my socks are holding up perfectly. Uh, they will get worn quite a lot and um, not all of them need to like uh, stay pristine. But um, of course I like them to be nice after I put so much work into making them. So yeah, we shall see. Uh, the socks are knit cuff down. I cast it on 48 stitches. And I knitted two by two rib um, for 15 rounds, and then I knitted a heel flap and gusset. And then I have my standard toe, which is, um, yeah, it probably has a name, but I don't remember it. But I increases. Uh, on both sides and I in no increase I decreased until I had I think I had only 10 stitches left no that's no 20 stitches left and then I grafted the toe using Kitchener stitch and that is something I do with almost all my socks nowadays when I need them cuffed down. Before I 
go on with my whips. I uh, realize now that I totally forgot to tell you what I'm wearing today. And this is my so faded sweater that I knitted um, during the summer. And I really, really love it. If you're interested in the details about this sweater, I believe that that's all in my, I think it's in the first episode where I tell you about the sweater. Mm. My coffee is turning quite cold. <laughs> first work in progress is this massive, massive sweater. And this is called the Blue Explorer. It's a test knit that I'm doing for Julia Blau. Oh, I think I'm pronouncing her name correctly, but I'm not sure. She's German. So I just uh, bound off uh, the bottom hem uh, yesterday uh, evening and um, and then I tried it on and I don't know, I feel like uh, a balloon, <coughs> oh excuse me, <coughs> a balloon or a, an apple when I'm wearing it because it's a very round shape and it's it's of course supposed to be oversized, um, but yeah, obviously I need to, to wash it and block it in order to get the correct shape and, and get some more drape into it because it's, it's very stiff at the moment. But anyway, the construction is quite genius and I'm thinking that I will hopefully be able to wear it as a you know, when you're going outside and the, and the days are very cold uh, but it's not raining. So you, I can go out and wear it as the, uh, instead of a, a coat. Um, and yeah, I hope that it will turn out to be a garment that I will get some use out of. I have started the first arm, as you see, and the arms are going to be quite fitted. So it's oversized, but with fitted arms. And I really like that construction. And um, there are some stripes on the yoke. And the stripes are made out of uh, just scraps of yarn that I had in my stash. And, and the scraps are, I think there are like three strands of scraps, scrap yarn in each of the stripes. So I just combine different colors of, of uh, scraps to make a contrast. Uh, the yarn that I'm using is it's the Pickles Tweedy and the colorway and uh, name is oh what's called um, Tegelstein in Norwegian it has a number it's A S D 4802 and I'm holding the yarn together with one strand of Holst. It's the Holst Super Soft in the Bullfinch color. So I really love the colors and I do love the fact that the, this entire sweater is made out of stash yarn and that feels really good. So yeah, it's uh, a fast knit once you're finished with the body, that is. <laughs> um, and uh, 
I believe I can crank out the the arms in uh, maybe today or today or tomorrow. And that is perfect because um, the deadline of the test knit is the 15th of October, which is Sunday, I believe. So I have some more, four, four or five more days to finish this off. So a lot of my knitting time these past two weeks have been going into the sweater. Um, I could of course made it in shorter period of time, but um, knitting with thick needles and bulky weight yarn is very hard on my shoulders and on my back. So I've been struggling a bit uh, with some back and neck and shoulder pain due to, to, to that, so I had to take it easy. Um, yeah, so second whip is of course my beloved mystery knit along um, and oh I should say this uh, immediately that I'm now going to show you the mystery Shawl by Stephen West, The Speckle and Pop. And if you are not interested in seeing any spoilers, please do look away now and I will tell you when it's uh, safe to look again. Okay, <laughs> so this is the Speckle and Pop shawl. a bird at the window. <laughs> I heard some weird noises. <laughs> it's really unsure. What is it? That's a bird uh, jumping on the outside of the win window post. <laughs> okay. Anyway. I am still on clue number one. So I'm way behind. Um, because clue number three is coming out in two or three days. Um, but the reason for that is of course that I had to prioritize to knit on the Blue Explorer sweater. But I am, I believe I'm about one third um, I've knitted one third of the first clue. And it's a very interesting construction, but that is what to expect when you are um, knitting something designed by Stephen West. Um, yeah, so the colors are changing all the way. So as you can see, it's um, a main color and then you have uh, eyelet holes with all the contrast and they are repeating a lot of times. And the part where I'm at uh, now, I think I've just yeah, I'm over to the second uh, main color and uh, this part is like some color blending between the first and the second main color. And then I will continue with color number two and repeat uh, the section with uh, color number three. So my main colors are this one and this is a beautiful yarn from Marnie's. It's um, some kind of sock base with polyamide. My second color is from Woolen Wine. And 
My third main color is from Garnsur. I am sorry that I am making noises <laughs> now, but I wanted to show you my contrast colors and they are um, dark gray and it's the same like charcoal gray that I have here in my so faded sweater. This one is the second color of my so-faded sweater and the white one here is the last color of my so-faded sweater. <laughs> yeah, and this is uh, leftover from my eyeball shawl and this is a yarn that I traded with my sweet friend Daisy and it is from Tante Ull, a local to me yarn dyer. I love those colors, they are so fresh. So I'm speckling and I'm popping and I I'm looking forward to continue knitting this, um, hopefully this weekend, uh, right after I finished the blue explorer sweater I will continue with clue number one and two and then three and hopefully make some good progress on the shawl because I do enjoy it. Uh, it's um, a very dynamic knit because uh, things are happening all the time so I definitely am not going to get bored with this one and that's, uh, that's a good thing. The final thing that I've been working on since my last podcast is the Halloween mitts um, and I have been talking about them for like three or four podcasts episodes now and um, I've been planning to knit them for quite a, some time. I had this uh, beautiful Halloween uh, edition yarn from Berenbulla, it's called Spooked and I bought it last year. Um, this year I thought I would knit a pair of mitts with them and um, I decided to knit the Eguin mitts. So these are the mitts. And they are just lovely like um, Celtic cabled on, on the top of the hand and the rest is ribbed. So, a beautiful construction. Um, and now you're probably wondering why I'm showing you the pattern and not the mitts. Well, the reason for that is that I started the first mitt where, when I was in our cabin mm, two weekends ago and I totally forgot it up there. So, I've only knitted the cuff on the first mitt and um, I will go back uh, to our cabin tomorrow and then I will of course pick it up and continue knitting on it. So, I <laughs> cannot show you any progress but I have done some progress and I will definitely show you next time. Okay, the battery on my camera just died. Um, my eldest daughter just got up to get some breakfast and <laughs> I think they're both um, awake downstairs now so hopefully there won't be too much interruptions. <laughs> uh, she really wanted to sit here 
by my side while I was recording the rest of the podcast episode that I said no, <laughs> no way, <laughs> that's too weird to be watched while recording. Anyway, I had to change to uh, record the rest of the podcast using my iPhone, so I hope that will turn out okay. And the sun is now coming in this window, so I also had to pull down the screens. Um, but yeah, I hope the lighting is still still okay. Well, I hopefully I was able to complete the uh, work in progress segment before the battery died. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so I'm now going to continue and I want to tell you about my new acquisitions. And I have a couple of things to show you. Um, firstly, I'm a big fan of Stranded Dye Works. As you have maybe noticed if you have watched my episodes before. So I noticed that she had come out with a new colorway for the Christmas or the holidays. And I had to just grab a skein of this and it is called Vintage Christmas. And it is so, so beautiful. It's a pale, pale, like minty green with specks of red and some teal color and greens and some yellow. And it is so beautiful. And it's on her new BFL uh, base. Secondly, I have a very good friend, um, Daisy. Hello, Daisy. And she was so kind as to buy some beautiful things for me. Uh, and she was on a um, yarn fair uh, at Lucken outside of Trondheim. Um, it is a, a wonderful yarn shop there called Fortuna, Garn Boutique and Fortuna. And they have uh, lots of wonderful yarn. And um, she bought me a ball of the perfect Arnie and Carlos Regia yarn. And it's the dark uh, green and red. And I really want this colorway because I am thinking of Christmas when I see this yarn. So I want to make myself a pair of Christmas socks. She also bought opal glitter yarn. And I have no clue what I'm going to knit with this, but probably some kind of socks, maybe for my youngest daughter. But because she still likes pinks and glitters and yeah. This is the color number 9331. And then she also bought me a sock blank. With sheep on. Or are they sheep or are they cows? I think they are cheap. <laughs> Beautiful. And the soft blank is made by Ultösne. And they are two ladies who die. Oh, sorry, it's upside down. Ultösne. And they are from Oppdal, I believe. Um, and they also have. Um, uh, podcast it's in Norwegian but um, but it's very inspiring and I love watching them just found them actually 
um, it is called Marit's Garn Cows, if you're interested to check it out. And with the sock plank, uh, because the sock plank is, I believe it's 50 gram, so it's for one pair of socks, and this is the contrast that went with the sock plank. So that I will use for cuffs, heels and toes, or I could use it. So that was my acquisitions. And I think that's more than enough for two weeks, especially considering all the stash that I showed you in the last episode. I said in the intro that I was planning a new segment today. I wanted to show you some knitwear for kids um, because I've been requested uh, to show that um, by a couple of viewers that were very interested in seeing what I have been making for my kids. Um, I have uh, a four-year-old son and then I have uh, two daughters and they are 12 and 15 years old and they are now using adult sizes. So um, I am planning to show you some of the things that uh, I knit for them in a later episode and um, this time I will show you some of the knitted garments uh, that my son is having and that he has been using quite a lot. Uh, the first thing I wanted to show you is a Mario sweater that's, yeah, this is one of his nicer garments. It's made out of thin alpaca. I believe it's the Sunnes thin alpaca. And it is so, I think this color combination is so beautiful that I, I really, really, really want to want a sweater like this for myself in these colors either. It's a very light, like mauve brown and white contrast for the pattern and the top part is um, pale, like dull blue, I would call it. And this sweater is, I think it's size four or five years and it's knit by my mother-in-law. And she's the only one in the family who is knitting besides myself. And she's also knitting a lot. So he's got a lot of things from her. Um, this is also a cardigan that she has made for him. It's made out of Sisu, which is a nylon wool blend so it's actually uh, suitable for socks it's very durable and sturdy and this is the Fama pattern it's also a traditional Norwegian pattern as for as is the um, the Mario sweater this is a, a sweater that I made him a couple of years ago I think the name was Colin Sweater. So it's, um, I think it was a top down raglan sweater. And the perfect thing about this is the, the color that's quite high. So it keeps him warm in, even in the neck. Um, so he has been using this a lot. So it's full of spots and it's unraveling on the bottom. <laughs> but that's how it is when uh, it's worn a lot. He has um, two or three different kind of trousers made of out of wool. And this is one of them I have made 
this out of scraps of sock yarn and I really really love to make garments out of scraps that is I something I've done for for years and this is one example of it so I have knitted this pair of trousers uh, bottom up so each leg uh, separately and then I've joined them and increased for for the rest and I even did some short rows here on the back because of the ribbing it's very very stretchy so he can wear this for a long long period of time I also wanted to show you the first pair of ribbed pants that I made him and this pair he, he used when he was a baby so I believe from three, maybe, well, maybe he was quite newborn when he started wearing them for just a month or two. And then he wore them until he outgrew the legs. So as you can see, there's a lot of stretch in it. This person I made out of scraps that I had of uh, baby wool. So it's very soft and, and warm. My son also have a selection of different mittens. These are felted mittens. He actually has um, inherited these from his big sisters. <laughs> so yeah. But he don't mind. I mean, he's four years old, so he don't mind the hearts and lilacs and yeah. He can still wear them, but in a couple of years, I suspect he will avoid everything pink and purple and hearty. These are another pair of mittens that he has been wearing a lot. Uh, it's Serbu mittens. I think that these are made out of, I'm not sure, but I have a book uh, with patterns for different kinds of Serbe mittens and this is one of the children's uh, versions that I just, I made the cuff uh, extra long and that is because when they are playing outside in the kindergarten um, there tend to be a gap between uh, the jacket and the mitten and they get quite wet and cold in this area. So yeah, and I just had put in a little I-cord uh, thread to, to tighten the mitten and prevent it from falling off his little hands. So that was just some examples of uh, children's knitwear that we have in our house. Um, we have so much more. So, But uh, if you're interested, I can show you more uh, later on. Lastly, I have an announcement to make. And that is the winner of the giveaway that I announced last time. I really wanted to give away some yarn from my stash. I'm therefore giving away these two balls of Kirkaldy two-ply uh, non-superwashy wool. DK weight and they will be perfect for like um, mittens, hats, yeah, many things I believe. Uh, but especially color work mitten. And I'm also giving away some beautiful progress keepers. I had 61 entries in the giveaway. So I asked Siri on my iPhone to choose a number between 1 and 61. And she chose number 19. And that was Deborah Stratton. So congratulations, Deborah. You won the yarn and the progress keepers and please get in touch with me 
through a message on Ravelry or by email and I will send the yarn uh, out to you as soon as possible. So thank you so much to everybody who participated in the giveaway and also a warm thank you to all of the lovely lovely comments that I received uh, after my past episode where I addressed uh, some issues about my language and I really had the best time reading through all those lovely comments and the beautiful feedback and um, it really made me feel a lot better about my Norwegian accent and some of the comments just um, made my heart sing really so you are just the best I am so grateful to be part of this loving and generous knitting community. So thank you. So before I wrap up this episode, I wanted to briefly talk about my knitting plans. Um, other than finishing up my whips, I am planning to knit a pair of Christmas socks really soon. Um, I have some Christmassy yarn in my stash and I think that I will make a pair of Christmas yarn from last year or knit a pair from the perfect that I just bought. Secondly, my husband has requested a new pair of thick wool socks. And in Norwegian, we have many names for thicker wool socks. He calls them lugga. Uh, I call them ragsocker. Uh, in other parts of the country, they're called like lasta. Yeah, many names, uh, but they are like uh, thicker wool socks made of, out of DK or even thicker yarn than DK. So I thought that I would use my marled socks recipe and knit him a pair of socks with um, two strands of fingering weight sock yarn. And um, I have promised to write up the pattern uh, before. So now I will definitely do that. I have written up the pattern in Norwegian, uh, but I haven't translated it into English yet. Uh, so hopefully I will do that in the next couple of weeks. Lastly, I am going to cast on Skandir's um, Nea Mitz, which is the second pair of her Selbemitten Club. So this was about it for this episode. I do hope that you liked what you saw and if you did please hit the like button on this episode on YouTube and uh, subscribe if you like to get the notification when a new episode is up. I hope that you have a couple of wonderful weeks and that you get a lot of knitting done. So until next time, bye bye, happy knitting! Mm -hmm.